Half a million of you watched my recent sepsis video and asked one critical question. Where does it actually start? Today, I'm revealing the five most common infections that trigger sepsis and why recognizing them early could save your life. We'll start with something as simple as a cough and travel to a source that is in many ways the most shocking of all. Understanding these starting points isn't just knowledge. It is your best defense against one of the leading causes of death in the world today. Our journey begins where so many common illnesses do. In our lungs, respiratory infections, especially pneumonia, are the single most common trigger for sepsis. They account for a huge number of cases, starting a chain reaction that can quickly spiral out of control. It often starts with something that seems manageable, a cold that won't go away, a case of the flu, or even COVID-19. You feel exhausted, you have a cough, you're running a fever, but then something shifts. The cough gets deeper, maybe producing discolored mucus. You feel a sharp pain in your chest when you breathe. You're short of breath and bone tired. These are no longer the signs of a common cold. These are classic warnings of pneumonia, an infection where the tiny air sacs in your lungs fill with fluid. This is often caused by bacteria like streptococcus pneumonia or viruses such as influenza. While our bodies can usually contain these infections, some people are at higher risk. The very young and those over 65, people who smoke, or those with a weakened immune system are all more vulnerable to pneumonia taking a dangerous turn. So, how does a lung infection become a full-body crisis? Imagine the infection in your lungs becomes so severe that the bacteria or viruses break out of the lungs and escape into the bloodstream. This is the moment of escalation. Once in the blood, these pathogens can travel everywhere. Your immune system, recognizing a body-wide threat, launches a massive inflammatory response. This response, designed to kill the invaders, is the very definition of sepsis. It's the same rogue army reaction we've talked about before, where the chemicals released to fight the infection start to damage your own tissues and organs. Blood vessels become leaky, blood pressure can plummet, and organs like the kidneys, heart, and brain are starved of the oxygen they need to survive. This is how a simple cough can, in some cases, become a life-threatening emergency. Prevention is about being proactive. Basic hygiene, like regular hand washing, is essential. And if you smoke, quitting is one of the most powerful things you can do to protect your lungs. Most importantly, listen to your body. A lingering cough, a fever that won't break, and shortness of breath are not symptoms to ignore. Seeking medical attention early for pneumonia can allow for prompt treatment. Stopping the infection before it has the chance to become sepsis. Don't wait. Before we move to our second common source of infection, please subscribe to this channel. I create weekly videos on health awareness, and with your support, these videos can reach more people who desperately need this information. Next, we move to our second most common source of sepsis, the urinary tract infection. For many, a urine infection is a painful but straightforward issue, but for some, especially the elderly, it can be a silent and incredibly dangerous threat. A urine infection is an infection anywhere in your urinary system, kidneys, bladder, or urethra. They are most often caused by E. coli bacteria, which normally live in the gut but can cause serious problems in the urinary tract. In most healthy adults, the symptoms are hard to miss. A constant urge to urinate, a burning sensation and cloudy or strong-smelling urine. These signs usually lead to a doctor's visit and a course of antibiotics. The real danger emerges when these classic symptoms are absent or misunderstood, which is tragically common in older adults. As we age, our immune response changes. Instead of localized pain, a urine infection in an elderly person might show up as sudden confusion, agitation, or a major change in their mental state. A family member might just notice their loved one is unusually sleepy or not making sense. These cognitive changes can easily be mistaken for dementia or just a bad day. 
This is a critical mistake because while the mind is confused, a serious infection is brewing. This progression is called urosepsis. It happens when a urine infection isn't treated promptly, allowing bacteria to travel from the bladder up to the kidneys. An infection in the kidneys is far more serious. The kidneys are rich with blood vessels, giving bacteria a direct gateway to the bloodstream and triggering the chaotic, system-wide immune response of sepsis. For patients who need a urinary catheter, the risk is even more direct, as a catheter can act as a highway for bacteria to enter the bladder. Preventing a urine infection from becoming sepsis hinges on vigilance. Staying well hydrated is crucial as it helps flush bacteria from the urinary system. For those at high risk, especially in care facilities, it's vital to ensure any catheters are managed with strict hygiene and removed as soon as they are no longer needed. But the most important strategy, particularly for the elderly, is recognising those atypical signs. If an older adult shows sudden, unexplained confusion, a urine infection should be treated as a prime suspect until it's ruled out. Getting them tested and treated is not just about comfort. It is a life-saving intervention to stop the march towards urosepsis. Our third common source of sepsis begins with our body's largest organ and its primary shield, the skin. Any break in this wall, a cut, a scrape, a burn or a surgical wound can become an open door for infection and, ultimately, for sepsis. The culprits are often bacteria that live on our skin, like Staphylococcus aureus, or Staph. This includes the antibiotic-resistant version, known as MRSA. When these germs get into the deeper layers of skin through a wound, they can cause a serious infection. It starts locally. You'll see the clear signs of an infection. The area becomes red, swollen, warm, and painful. This is often a condition called cellulitis. You might see pus draining from the wound, a sign your body is fighting back. As the infection takes hold, you might also develop a fever. This is a critical moment. If the body can't contain the infection, it can spread deeper into the tissues. From there, the bacteria can invade the bloodstream, triggering the same systemic inflammatory assault that defines sepsis. People with diabetes, poor circulation, or weakened immune systems are at a much higher risk. For someone with diabetes, even a small blister on the foot can become a severe infection. Post-surgical patients are also vulnerable. A surgical incision is a wound, and despite sterile procedures, there's always a risk of infection that can progress to sepsis. Prevention starts with diligent wound care. Any break in the skin should be cleaned with soap and water and covered. If you're recovering from surgery, follow all care instructions and know the signs of infection. Spreading redness, increasing pain, foul-smelling drainage or a fever are all red flags that require immediate medical attention. This is not the time to wait and see. Early treatment with the right antibiotics can keep the battle contained to the skin, preventing it from becoming a systemic war. Now, we move inside the body to the abdominal cavity. This is where infections are the second most common cause of sepsis. Unlike the other sources, these infections often start when something goes wrong with one of our own organs. Think of appendicitis, diverticulitis, when pouches in the colon get infected, or an infected gallbladder. In each case, the wall separating the bacteria-filled gut from the sterile abdominal cavity is broken. Bacteria leak out, causing a widespread infection called peritonitis, a true medical emergency. The warning signs are often severe. Intense, unrelenting abdominal pain is the key symptom. This isn't a typical stomachache. It's a pain that can make it hard to even move. This is usually accompanied by a high fever, chills and nausea. From here, the progression to sepsis is incredibly fast. The lining of the abdomen is rich in blood vessels and it rapidly absorbs the bacteria and toxins that have leaked out. The body's immune response is immediate and ferocious. The systemic inflammation of sepsis kicks in, often leading quickly to septic shock, where blood pressure drops to dangerously low levels. When it comes to something like appendicitis, there's no way to prevent it. 
But the key is immediate action. Pain that starts near the belly button and moves to the lower right abdomen, especially with a fever, should send you to the emergency room without delay. For any severe, persistent abdominal pain, you should never try to tough it out. It's your body's signal that something is terribly wrong. Delayed treatment for a burst appendix or a perforated bowel doesn't just increase the risk of sepsis, it makes it almost a certainty. We've arrived at our final and in many ways most tragic source of sepsis, the hospital. Hospital-acquired infections are a devastating source of sepsis because they happen in the one place we go to heal. And while sepsis that starts in the community is more common, studies show that hospital-acquired sepsis is often associated with higher mortality rates and longer ICU stays. How does this happen? Hospital patients are, by definition, vulnerable. They may be recovering from major surgery or have weakened immune systems. This vulnerability is made worse by the fact that modern medicine often requires invasive devices that, while life-saving, can become direct pathways for infection. A central line, an IV placed in a large vein, can provide a route for skin bacteria to enter the bloodstream directly. A urinary catheter can become a highway for bacteria to enter the bladder and a breathing tube can allow germs to enter the lungs, causing a severe pneumonia. The bacteria involved in these infections are often not ordinary germs. Hospitals can be breeding grounds for multidrug-resistant organisms, or superbugs, like MRSA and others. These have evolved to survive our most powerful antibiotics, making the resulting sepsis incredibly difficult to treat. When a patient develops sepsis from a resistant organism, doctors have very limited options. The mortality rate for patients who develop septic shock is distressingly high and can be over 40%. Hospitals are on the front lines of this battle, with strict protocols for hand hygiene and the sterile management of invasive devices. But as a patient or an advocate for a loved one, you also have a critical role. Don't be afraid to ask every healthcare provider who enters the room if they have washed their hands. Ask daily if a catheter is still necessary. Look at IV sites and surgical wounds. If you see redness or swelling, tell the nursing staff immediately. Your vigilance is a powerful line of defence. We have journeyed from a cough, to a urine infection, to a simple cut, to a pain in the abdomen, and into the very halls of a hospital. We've seen how five common types of infection, respiratory, urinary, skin, abdominal and hospital acquired, can all lead down the same dangerous path to sepsis. Sepsis is not its own disease. It is the body turning on itself in a final, desperate attempt to save you. Understanding these sources is your most powerful tool. It gives you the knowledge to connect a worsening cough to pneumonia to see sudden confusion in an elderly parent as a potential sign of a severe urine infection, and to know that a red, angry wound needs a doctor, not just a new bandage. Sepsis is a leading cause of death in hospitals, but it doesn't have to be this way. Early recognition and early treatment are the keys to survival. If this video has been helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. More importantly, share this video. Talk to your family and friends. The information we've covered today could genuinely save a life. For more detailed information, please visit the websites of the CDC or the Sepsis Alliance. Remember, sepsis is a medical emergency. If you ever suspect it, if you see an infection combined with confusion, extreme pain, shortness of breath, a high heart rate or clammy skin, you must seek medical help immediately. Do not delay. In the fight against sepsis, every minute counts. Thank you for watching.